Good afternoon, honorable guests, fellow SBF locators and residents, ladies and gentlemen. She is one of the 2017 top 100 influential Filipina women in the world. For the state of the Freeport address, let us give a warm round of applause to the chairman of the board and administrator of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority, Attorney Wilma Ami T. Isma. Good afternoon, everyone. Magandang hapon po. Magandang hapon po. Good afternoon. Oh, please sit down. Before anything else, I'd like to thank the Subic Bay Freeport Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. Of course, I'd like to thank everybody who made this possible. I know there's a lot of faces out there, the unsung heroes who made things at the back of the scene. Maraming maraming pong salamat. Of course, I cannot do this and stand here before you without the support of my team, Ronnie, Nat, Ferdy, Mike, and there's also somebody out there who I would like to thank, the one who gave me the courage to stand up here and do this right. Thank you. Efcaristo se agapo. To the members of my board who are here today, thank you so much for being here. To the men and women of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority, to the executives of the local government units who are here, of course, to the officials of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce, to the whole Subic Bay Freeport community. Magandang hapon po sa kanilang lahat. If you allow me to start with a quote from U.S. Senator Margaret Chase Smith. My creed is that public service must be more than doing a job efficiently and honestly. It must be complete dedication to the people and to the nation with full recognition that every human being is entitled to courtesy and consideration. That constructive criticism is not only to be expected but sought, that spears are not only expected but fought, that honor is to be earned, not bought. Up next, I'll show you what happened in 2017 in pictures. I call for applause because all of you made this happen. You are the ones who made all this because you responded to my call for malasakit. For those, I can't even find the right word for it. Malasakit is, you know, that kind of love, that gut-wrenching love that you can feel in your gut? That's malasakit. Um, you know that kind of love that you give to your child, but more? The kind of love that I give to my own nephews. Because just in case you don't know, I don't have kids. To me, that kind of love that you give until it hurts, that is malasakit. And you all gave it in 2017 for Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority and for Subic Bay Freeport. And I thank you. 
As you know, um, in the last, say in February, we've had cruise ships around here. And when I see them, I got to thinking that Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority or Subic Bay itself is like a cruise ship. We are, the passengers are you guys, my locators, residents, investors. And if you're a passenger in a cruise ship, you want a safe and memorable journey. And of course, in every ship, there's a captain, a captain that will steer the ship to make sure that every human being in said ship will be safe and will reach its destination. And that responsibility is mine. However, I can't do it alone, as I keep on saying. That cruise ship will not move without my crew, my hardworking crew. So I can, if I can please ask my SBA family to stand up. People from SBMA, can you please stand up? These people are the ones who did all the hard work for me. They made my work easy because they gave them all. They are the ones who deserve the applause, and they are also the reason why I am here today. Last year, I stood here before you as administrator and presented a 10-point agenda. If you can just allow me to just present to you what has been done. The first point is policy and governance. It has been a tough year, but with the support of my board of directors, we were able to implement very strict policies and governance, rule, governance uh, policies into the board and into the things of SBMA. One, the CRTEs are now being released by my office. So if you have any issues, you can call my office, you can call my staff. And if there are people who are asking for money, I've heard a lot of rumors, it's the reason why it's now in my office because apparently there is some, please don't hesitate to get, back, to get back to me and tell me. I'm sure everybody knows my number by this time. We are also currently working on extending the CRTE validity for three years. This needs a little bit of work. We have to work with the Department of Finance and uh, the BIR, but this is something that we'd like to do very soon. Also with the support of my board, we implement several very, very strict policy reforms um, extension of project development schedules are, will now be heavily scrutinized and, if warranted, denied. I'm sure you already know we tightened our policy for collecting receivables. We even canceled the contract of Dynamic Construct because they were not able to deliver their development commitment. We also started repossessing SBMA properties for those who are not paying rent. Look, I have been criticized lambasted, crucified for many of these actions. But I, together with my board of directors, stands firm. There is no room for personal interest in our term. There is only room for the interest of SBMA and SUBIC. Sustainable development is very important. It's a second in our 10-point agenda. I'm pleased to announce that in just very recently, like a few weeks ago, SBMA is the first government agency that was given the ISO certification for environmental standards. It's called ISO 14001. What does it mean? It means that we can actually address negative effects to the environment, comply with laws, and continually improve the same. And I believe we got this, we were able to do this because of the malasakit that we have for SBMA, for SUBIC, for our community, our home, our planet. Why did I say that? Napakadami pong nagbo-volunteer sa lahat ng cleanups, sa lahat ng coastal, uh, coastal cleanup drives. Uh, Zed Avicilia is here. He's one of, the, one of the leaders doing that international coastal cleanup. Halos limang libo pong tao ang lumabas for the tree planting activities on Arbor Day. And I will have to tell you, I'm very, very proud of my SBMA employees, my SBMA family. Every Friday, they will come in early, 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning. Before they go to work, they will do their own volunteer cleanup. In fact, 
Kanina pong umaga, dumating ako sa office ng alas 7. Nakakahiya. Dahil I was not prepared to do a cleanup, nakikita ko yung mga tao ko nagwawalis sa mini golf course. Why? Because something's happening this morning and they want to put up a very, very good phrase for Subic. So I had to go down my car and join them. That's the kind of people I work with. That's the kind of people who works for you. So I'm very, very proud and thank you for all the malasakit. <laughs> Next come the tricky part. Safety and security. Oh, I know everybody wants to hear about this. Ha! <sighs> Look. As you can see here on this slide, the average response time of our emergency and rescue team improved by two minutes. I know you will tell me, ah, what's two minutes? But come on, man. If it's a matter of life and death, two minutes spells forever. And we do try hard, we do try hard to make things happen. Of course, our police force also managed to reduce some crimes, crime volume in other areas, break-ins, robberies, bukas koche. We do our part. However, it is undeniable, we need to boost security capabilities and heighten our vigilance to address all forms of criminal activities. There is much to be desired, and we hope to do more. We've also strengthened our disaster resilience and preparedness program. In fact, for the first time, um, SUBIC and SBMA joined nationwide simultaneous earthquake drills together with the Philippine Red Cross, and we also trained more than 9,000 people in various capacity buildings to address disaster preparedness. We have to be prepared for any eventuality. We also tried to implementing the, implementing the Anti-Distracted Driving Act because we need to have our roads safe. Community engagement is very important. And on top of our list, of course, are our Aita brethren. We all know that much of Subic is the ancestral land of the Aitas. On the forefront, of course, is our joint management agreement with the Pastol and Ambala tribe, which I even received an award recently in the International Finance Award 2007 uh, held in Singapore for both best social responsibility initiative. Shempre, we did not forget the other Aita tribes. We have some in Kanawan in Morong, Bataan, and we have some in Subic uh, over up to Donda Peninsula called Kawag. We are, try we are now helping them with various livelihood programs. Sapagkat naniniwala po ako that it is better to teach them how to fish rather than give them fish. We continue to support various community programs because we have a lot of stakeholders. There are marginalized sectors within our jurisdiction, such as the fisher folks and the waste pickers. Um, and we are now, in fact, we just uh, organized the first Freeport Cooperative Development Conference. Army and his team did this very well. Again, in, our, in light of our support to provide livelihood to, those of our, to the marginal sectors of our areas. It's very important for us to continue to be engaged with the business community. So throughout the year, me and my team goes out there, conduct town hall meetings, have one-on-ones and other programs so that we can connect to our stakeholders such as you. And of course, most importantly with community engagements, our local government units. We, I would like to believe that we now have stronger partnerships with the local government units. We are now more engaged. A few months ago, um, Congressman Jeff Kung Hon actually told me, this is the first time that the SBMA leadership and the local government units have an actual open, comfortable relationship and communication lines. And to think to me, this is a very, very big step and a very, very positive development, especially in the light of our Freeport expansion projects. This is something that has, hasn't happened in a very, very long time. So I'd like to take this opportunity to move that forward. Of course, it's important to talk about locator service. 
And we did try to make life easier for our locators. We have our board, of the, with the support of our board of directors, we approved reduction of documentary requirements for business registration. Our OSD people, Jerry, are you here? Jerry and his team has been very, working very, very hard to do off-site um, ID processing. Those are the things that are giving so much pain to our investors and locators, and our OSD office addressed that. Our TFCD are also one of our major performers. We seriously reduce processing times, admission permits, declaration of, uh, declaration of admission, export declarations, something that we had to do. We also received very high marks in terms of feedback. However, while these numbers may be impressive, our aim is to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. Even then, there will always be room for improvement. Part of locator service is accessibility. I think my accessibility has been known. My number is given like everywhere. Ang lagi ko lang pong bilin, ano? Jay, pwede akong ligawan, pero hindi ako pwede utangan. You can send me a text or call me. I will answer. If I don't, Somebody in my staff will get back to you. This is something that I promise you, and I hope I was able to show in, the, in 2017. We also recently, uh, we re, we also recently opened our one-stop shop center. Um, this is over at the ground floor um, of the regulatory office. Kenneth and his team are ready to receive you. Um, CRTEs and CRs are now being processed online, automated, and an automated online process. Of course, there are also other business services in, those, in that office. Again, if that doesn't work, please tell me. For us to be considered a free port as a gateway, a seaport is very important. While our strategic location is a distinctive edge, we still have to work hard and introduce various marketing strategies to further our goals. One, of course, is um, we waive port accreditation fees. This is something that we did in cooperation with SBITC. This is part of our marketing campaign called Hashtag Go Subic Bay. We also signed an MOU with the Virginia Port Authority to encourage growth of trade. We're also now working on uh, connecting a port to port route services. We are starting with the Port of LA to Subic. And ang pinaka happy po ako is that shipping lines calling the port of Subic from 2015, which is seven, is now 23 from the first quarter. All these underscore the great potential of Subic as a major seaport gateway. I can't talk about the seaport without talking about the airport. We are now positioning SBM, the Subic Bay International Airport as a tra an air traffic gateway for general aviation business services. Right, Kurt? Recently, we had the Asian Business Av Aviation Association executives, and through that visit, with the help of Mr. Kurt Perry around here, we are able to attract several businesses to put up operations here in Subic. I'm sure you already know by now that Philippine Airline President Lucia Tan came over, um, I think, three Sundays ago. After that visit, Mr. Tan was very impressed and is now officially moving the Philippine Airline Flying School to Subic. And I'm very excited because I'm confident... <laughs> because I'm confident that once Paul is here doing its business, there's no way to go but up. Another part of our 10-point uh, agenda, of course, is the attraction of foreign direct investments. We participated in various DTI investment roadshows, or I would say I was asked by DTI to lead various investment roadshows. The one, in the, the one that we went to in Japan resulted in two businesses that, who signed letters of intent in front of the president, committing 19.6 million U.S. dollars in committed investments. We are also continue to pursuing leads 
from our trips to South Korea, Taiwan, Australia, and the US. Of course, part of our agenda is helping the MSMEs. MSMEs are the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Our team is now currently working with the Land Bank and the Department of Trade and Industry in providing loan facilities and trading programs for the MSMEs here in Subic. Now, my favorite part, Tourism Star. In early 2017, we dared to dream to make Subic the next cruise ship destination of Asia. With that singular purpose, we sought speaking engagements, we sought meetings, participated in cruise ship conferences, hosted cruise ship lines officials here in Subic, only to pursue leads. In February 2018, this has become a reality when MV Costa Atlantica made a port call in Subic. And we are currently and we are currently negotiating for more of these stops. Let's not forget, we also won for Subic several awards, such as the 2017 Best Sports Destination of the Year. This was given at the Third Sports Industries Awards and Conference in Asia, held in Bangkok. Our team, our team Fantastic Subic Bay, vested Visit Victoria of Australia and Amazing Thailand. Moon Moon Bay Marina also opened its water park here in 2017. And in a few weeks, Ocean Adventure will also open its own water park. In support of President Duterte build, Duterte's Build, Build, Build program, we have to have our own Build, Build, Build program. However, with our hand-me-down hand port and airport facilities, bridges, road networks that we inherited from the Americans, the need to fix these infrastructures becomes imperative. For the first time in 25 years, somebody thought maybe we could ask money from the national government. And we did. Our allies in Congress, most particularly Senator Richard J. Gordon, assisted us in securing funds to repair our seaport, our airport, the Magsaysay -Sai Bridge, and last Saturday, I was up late night dancing with the Department of Budget and Management Director just so I can get funds to repair our roads. <laughs> Part of our priority agenda, of course, is working with the local governments for pre-port expansion. I'm very, very happy, again, as I said, with the kind of relationship that we have right now, because that expansion is long coming, and we need to make it happen. We cannot forget that the sweet fruit of our small and big successes for 2017 is for the award that we received in Singapore from the International Finance Magazine where we are awarded the fastest growing trade zone in Asia for 2017. <laughs> I'm the captain of your ship, and I'm accountable. With all these, I would like to start showing you what our numbers are. Look, I received a lot of social media comment and they're all saying, well, this, there's this one social media uh, center. There's, there's, one, there's this one social media site that keeps on saying, Subic is going down. Well, you don't see my... But if you can see, our net income is up 34%. We even manage to service our debt by 5%. So... If that's not good financial health, what is? Of course, we have to talk about business and investments. In this slide, you can see 
the committed investment go down, went down. Why? Because finally, there is an SBMA board who had the guts to call on dubious investments. Those committed investments from the past that didn't happen, we had the guts to say no to it. That's why it went down. I think, and I hope, you'll be, I hope you will believe me, or rather accept it, that the more important number here is the expansion projects of the existing locators. Because this only means that there's increased confidence in Subic. You, who are already here doing business in Subic, decided you can expand some more. 203% increase. So I don't know if that's not confidence. I don't know what is. This is my favorite, favorite slide. In 2017, 15,500 additional Filipinos got a job here in Subic. And those people came not just from the surrounding areas, not just from Castillejos or San Antonio. They came from as far as Pampanga, as far as Tarlac, and even beyond. You know what? We have since quadrupled the jobs generated by the former U.S. Naval Base. If that is not success, I don't know what is. Again, social media. Again, social media sites are saying Subic is go down, is going down, and, and we're not contributing to the national economy. It's, well, I can tell you that's fake news. Because our total contribution to the national economy for 2017 increased by 14 percent. That's 19.6 billion pesos to the national government. If that is not a stronger economic drive, I don't know what is. Of course, I cannot talk to, about Subic without talking about port revenues. We've increased containerized cargo traffic by 13%. This is in close cooperation with the SBITC people. Boji, if you're out there, thank you for all the support. Our, also, our transshipment volume increased also by 468%. Of course, we have to talk about tourism. We've increased same-day same visitor arrivals by 10%, MICE events by 20%. And of course, the skeptics in you will say, how come there's a negative peer figure? The, neg the negative figure actually represents the magnitude of the events, and then of course, when there's a magnitude of the, if the magnitude of the event is smaller, there will be smaller people. But I'd like just to point out for the sporting events and sports participants, I think this is a direct, it's a direct it, it, this has a direct connection to my very first official act in 2017, when I stopped and prohibited fighting here in Subic. My father is rolling on his grave as we speak because my father is a cockfight aficionado and his dear daughter didn't want cockfight in Subic. We cannot, we, we, when we talk about tourism, I'd like to be able to talk about the travel fairs that my team went to, that you went to. We received a lot of support from our tourism stakeholders and I thank you for all that. We joined these travel fairs and has paid off. We even had a net earnings of 2.06 million, in addition to, of course, more people coming to Subic because of the exposure. Now we go to a little bit more controversial part, the ETAF. The reality is we need ETAF. We spend it for environment protection, tourism marketing, promotion activities. They are held in separate books. You, each and every one of you, please come to the office. The books is open. You can look at how we spend ETAF. And one of the things that I implemented this year, the travel expenses of my team to go to travel fairs, whether local or international, are now paid by SBMA, not by ETAF anymore. 
Another controversial part that I have to speak on, KUSA. KUSA is a hot topic, but it should not be. The courts has already ruled on the validity of the KUSA, but look, massive amounts remains unpaid. 139 million. Magbayad naman kayo. I ask all of you to be responsible and pay. Please do not wait for SBMA to es escalate because we can and will continue to impose. If you allow me a few more seconds to look at this slide. On to the right. The money that we need for construction maintenance, utilities, street lights, fire, law enforcement, is 236.6 million. That's what we need. Our total billing is only 103.3 million. And only 68.3 million were collected. So pretty much 75% did not. First, no, sorry. Half that didn't pay, and we still have another 100 million to advance. So that's my point. We need KUSA to be able to maintain SBMA. So I ask you, please pay your KUSA. Again, I ask, do not wait for SBMA to escalate. We can and will continue to impose it. I'll take a short breath here because I'll tell you that all these numbers are all, again, of course, based on how the country is working on, or rather, the health, the financial and economic health of the country. It is clear in this slide that even the international community is bullish about the Philippines. In fact, the latest U.S. News World Report says the Philippines is the best country to invest in. However, for Subic, just like any other cruise ship, there are challenges. Of course, I have to talk about my personal challenge. In 2017, I saw rough seas due to the leadership role in the first nine months of my term. It was a very, very difficult time for me personally, but also for SBMA and the Freeport community. However, I reiterate, it was never about me. The issue has always been and will forever be about the future of Subic. But that is all in the past now. With a fresh mandate and a recognition from the international community, I will try more than my best to steer Subic Voyage to a destination worthy of all your hard work and the malasakit that I ask you to put in. Of course, there are several more challenges. Train. The train is the tax reform for acceleration and inclusion law. This is already passed. As President Piano said, there's really nothing more we can do about it. But I think I encourage you to get as much as information as you, as you can get. Because at the end of the day, Information is key. The more we understand about train law, the more we will be able to address it and the more we will be able to cope properly for your businesses. And I have to agree with Mr. Piano when he said, we have a bigger challenge with train too. This is something that we all have to work together. We are, I am doing my part and I'm trying to work very hard with the Subic Bay Freeport Chamber of Commerce to do this. I will try very hard to work with you guys so that we can get closure or get something advantageous for Subic in train two. We have other challenges, solid waste management. This is something that should have been on a crisis point already six years ago. And we have been racking my brains uh, 
Monch and I have been going out there trying to find a solution to this. We worked with, we already spoke with Metro Clark. Monch, I forgot to tell you, I spoke with Mr. Bert Lina last night because they're doing the Laguna Lake Authority waste, uh, waste management and they're coming on Friday. This is something that needed to be done six years ago, but it took us forever. And we have to, we have to hold the bull by its horns and face it already. While we beg for your understanding, we know that needs to be, this needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. More to challenges, smuggling. Boying, boss. Smuggling is another pressing concern. We cannot close our eyes to this. We should not allow it. We are as guilty and complicit if we continue to <clears throat> close our eyes to smuggling, even if it's already staring into our faces. We need to fight, we need to tighten and beef up security, port security, law enforcement efforts. We need to add surveillance and patrol equipment. We need to punish anyone involved in a, any smuggling attempt. And of course, we have to support Boeing and his team from the Bureau of Customs because they are the main enforcer. We also recently signed an, a memorandum of agreement with the Bureau of Customs when Commissioner La Peña was here. They have committed um, to bring in, in Subic, the BOC Customs Academy. And Commissioner La Peña also acceded. Naglambing po ako kay Commissioner La Peña. He acceded to my lambing that BOC will provide motorcycles to help us patrol uh, the ports. Boying, in announce ko na, you cannot, you cannot say no to it anymore. You owe me 60? <laughs> so I thank the BOC for their support. And of course, another controversial one, safety and security. This is another challenge that we need to face 2018. In fact, we have been facing this, you have been facing this way before I got here. And this is something that we need to address post haze. I'm hoping that we can do it together. I've discussed with you some of the challenges that we face. What I would like to take you now is what are some of the action plans that we want to do on how to move forward for 2018. Again, my favorite part. Making Subic a, a port of call for cruise ship is not my original idea. Hindi po ako ang nakaisip niyan. As far back as Chairman Richard Gordon, when he was the first, when he was the first SBMA chair, he was telling you, Manny, I know you though. Manny and I, we were in the end with Senator Gordon saying, we need those cruise ships, cruise ships in. But we were so ahead of that game at that time. For most of 2017, this has been my all-consuming goal, to make them come. And now, they are here. In fact, at 11 in the morning today, MV superstar Gemini docked at Alaba Pier with its 2,000 passengers and crew members. <clears throat> since, the port call, since the first port of call of MV Costa Atlantica in February, We've already negotiated 17 more stops for 2018 for, um, for MV Costa Atlantica alone. We also already convinced world class, world cruise lines, Genting Cruise Lines, and Royal Caribbean and to come to Subic. They've confirmed their arrivals and we're negotiating for more stops for 2018. You, the investors, you already know what's coming. So please, get our act together and make sure that you are ready for those business opportunities. The first part of our hard work is over. We already convinced the cruise ships to come to Subic. Now, the more difficult part is to keep them coming. And that is where all of us should work hard for. I ask each and every one of you to put 
all our best foot forward because we need to show them an experience of a lifetime so that they will keep on coming back. Of course, in addition to the cruise ships, we also have other activities lined up to get people to come in Subic. So we have to be ready when hundreds and hundreds of people will come to Subic for 2018. Some of the things that we also need to do and is the lack of land. Land is an issue. We don't have any. That's why we need to start thinking out of the box and work on a vision that will allow us to expand our jurisdiction. It will probably include reclamation. It will include harnessing of infilled in areas, develop Redondo, and of course, work with our LGU partners to tap their own resources. If you ask me, this should have been done many years ago. There should have been foresight. They should not have waited until there's no land anymore. We are now on the 11th hour. This has to happen. This should have happened yesterday. But I'd like to be able to say that we also have some good news for 2018. Triboa Majestic Bay residences will be completed by 2020. Deem Leisure, which was approved by this board, will invest 3.6 billion, billion Philippine pesos in a, new, in a new golf course and hotel and leisure facilities over at Tipo. The Rainforest Golf Course, which is the former Benictican Valley Golf Course, will open in October 2018. And of course, Global Marine System has committed uh, the, a cable de depot project at 136 million, a global residential hotel condominium of 38 million. These are just some of the other exciting things that we need to do for 2018 and beyond. Safety and security, I know, is an issue. I would like to reiterate that a certification for ISO 45001 is monumental. We would like to be able to sustain its efforts and build on its gain. We are now trying to register for 45,001 again. Disaster risk management is important. We cannot rest on our laurels because anytime a disaster could happen. I know safety and security is key to the success of Subic. We do have a lot of things to do. Believe me, I know the weight of that safety and security issue is in my shoulders every single day. However, we need your help. Please exercise vigilance. Let us not make it easy for these criminals. The sad reality is, until such time, there is no divide between the rich and the poor, until such time that there is still envy. There is no envy in this world. Criminality will exist. So let us not tempt them. Be vigilant with strangers. Mind your own belongings. Let us not flaunt our wealth. Close your doors. I know you will say, oh, I, should not, I should be able to not close my doors. But again, I go back. This is not a perfect world after all. As long as there's rich and poor, criminality will exist. We will try very, very hard. Believe me, I know. I can see Jen staring at me even if I don't see her. And Charo. I can see Charo's eyes. I can... Charo's penetrating me right now, even if I don't know where he, she is sit, seated. Safe, however, I ask you, safety and security is not my job alone. While I bear the responsibility, we have to do this together. So now I go back. Please pay your kusa. Reklamo kayo na reklamo. There's this post, where's my kusa going? 36.6 million unpaid, 136 million unpaid in the cumulative unpaid for the last three years. You want CCTVs? There's a post, how come Subic does not have a CCTV in the streets? I have to pay for CCTVs. Those CCTVs doesn't come free. I need to pay for it, I need to buy it, Therefore, you need to pay your kusa so we can pay for CCTVs. That modernized security system that you want, 
they all come with a price. Kinalakal ko na nga po ang aking... Kinalakal ko na nga po ako sa BOC. Nanghingi po ako ng sasakyan. Because I know we need to patrol the ports and the housing areas. Buti na lang, nadaan pa sa ganda ko si Commissioner La Peña. Because we have to be innovative. Again, I go back. This is in the pipeline, and we need the CUSA to pay for them. Kung hindi po nyo alam, we actually don't get anything from the national government. Nothing. We don't get subsidy. In fact, this is only the first year that we, get a we got a subsidy because I asked. I thought to ask. So we need your help and cooperation. We are also in the for forefront of amending RA 7227. Do you know that while we give our partner LGUs a share of our income, SBMA does not get any? Hindi naman po masama ang loob ko, Mayor Inton. Okay lang po yun sa akin. Sa pogi mong yan. I'll give it any time. Pero wala pong natatanggap ang SBMA na share from its income. Ang kinikita po namin, yung binabayad yung lease, yung mga nagbabayad, ha? Kasi alam naman natin na hindi lahat ng mabayad. Those are the thi those, that's the money that we use for our everyday activities, sweldo ng tao, maintenance of roads, because we don't get any subsidy from the national government. Do you know that our law enforcement department could not even file cases in the courts for criminal activities that they catch and apprehend here in the Freeport because the law does not allow it. Marami pong problema natin ngayon dito sa Subic would be cured if the law is amended. And in the past 25 years, RA 7227 has been overtaken by times. Administrators Aresa and Garcia did try to get it amended, but they failed. If there is one legacy that I would like to leave behind for the Subic May Metropolitan Authority is this, to amend the law so it should be able, so it would be able to cope up with the times. We are also currently working with um, a company in Silicon Valley to introduce autonomous vehicles as a mode of transportation here in Subic, at least in some areas. This is something that we hope to be able to work hard for, and if we do, we will be ahead of the pack. You know what? Grab is coming. Yeah. This has been on the deck for the last couple of years. I think they already tried coming over together with Uber, but that didn't work. With the help of Zed and Donna, who helped me connect with Grab. Because commuter service is important. And if you ask me, this should have been done yesterday. I'm sure you will agree with me that commuter service in Subic leaves much to be desired. But now as we move forward in partnership with, as the, with the Subic Bay Freeport Chamber of Commerce, Grab will definitely be here by 2018. If you can just allow me to dream a little bit. Libre naman po mangarap, di ba? For somebody who was born, bred, and raised here in, in Olongapo, and I'll probably die here in Olong. I'm sure I will die here in Olongapo. My dreams for Subic are lofty and ambitious. The kind of dreams that I will probably never get to realize even during my lifetime. But I will die trying to plant the seeds so that these dreams will materialize in the lifetime of my nephews. I dream for San Antonio to be the next Amalfi Coast. This is in Sorrento, Italy, 
where the roads will hug the mountains and the community will be on top of it. Waters will remain pristine and an enviable quality of life. That's my dream. I also dream for a bridge that will connect Subic to Redondo Peninsula. A bridge that will ease traffic, that will provide jobs, provide economic development, and will make Redondo Peninsula alive. I also dream for more lands. I keep on complaining, we need land. And what should we do? I dream to reclaim waters so that we can build new lands. I know it's almost impossible. But if I don't start this now, when? If I don't do this now, who? I also have other dreams. Hopefully dreams that we can attain, attain, achieve together. Dreams for sustainable environment, clean waters, solid waste management, no litter. Wala lang, malinis lang. Who wants to live in a dirty house, right? I also dream for a happy, safe, and secure environment. I dream where I will not receive a call that someone in Kalayaan had a gun pointed to her head. I dream of a time that we can all sleep with our windows and doors open. Yes, Jen, that's my dream too. I would like to believe that all these are possible. This is something that we could do, that we could do together as a community. We have to do something. And I, to my mind, what's important is compliance. There are two kinds of people in this room. Those who love me and those who don't. Barney, do you have a list? <laughs> There's also, two, again, two, two kinds of people in this room. Those who care and those who don't. But as I said, this has never been and should not be about me. This is about caring for Subic, our community, and our country. To bring Subic to the tomorrow we want, we have to follow the rules. We have to comply with regulations. You have to pay your rent. You have to pay your CUSA. Remit the ETAF. Because all this is part of a plan that we should adhere to so that we can bring Subic to new heights. Yes, you. You who are members of this community, the private sector, and us from SBMA, we should do our jobs with integrity and character, one that is unquestionable. The more, than, the more important image that we have to harness is our integrity and character. Sure, Subic is already known for we're clean, we follow traffic rules, but as you already know, perception is reality. And I put everyone to task to protect the image of Subic because after all, we will rise and fall on how the world will see us. That's why I will not tolerate corruption. With integrity as our moral compass, it goes without saying, there is zero tolerance for grub and corruption in my term and in my board of directors term, whether within SBMA, within Subic, or anywhere else in the preport. I will never allow this corrosive to destroy the reputation and gains we all worked hard for. As I end, I would like to reiterate my clarion call for Malasakit sa Subic. Do not do it for me. Do it for the 8,000 volunteers who made Subic what it is today. 
Do it for those who fought hard last year, just last year. Those who fought hard last year to protect Subic, to make sure that we have stable leadership. Do it for yourself, for your businesses. Do it for your businesses. Do it for your children. Do it for my nephews. Do it for our future. Our journey has just begun. We are all better together. Marai pong salamat.